again, welcome to 55 and 5, the only show on YouTube that goes one by one through the entire 121 card 1955 Parkhurst Wrestling set. I mean, Riccavani, Carrie Silken is here. We have Uncle Gunny. We have Captain Lou, our spiritual advisors. We have AJ, our producer from Basan Creative. And we have a thrilling episode. Carrie, we had a, a, a good, fun one yesterday that we both kind of knew someone something about. It makes it a little better <laughs> when we know something about these guys. But the ones we don't know about, we'll learn about. Yeah. And, then, you know, whether it's Ken Kenneth or Steve McGill <laughs> or, or any of the, the folks that we've spoken about, it's always fun to learn something new. I learned something new about today's subject who we talked about how Lou Newman might be the most famous wrestler to not have a Wikipedia. This might be the most famous or, or most well-drawing wrestler that people have forgotten if you if you have to put it on a scale. So the premise of this five minutes, Carrie and I provide any memories, any information that we have on each of the wrestlers in the set. I'm going to show this one right on top of Uncle Lou or uh, Uncle Lou, Captain Lou and Uncle Gunny. <laughs> there you have it. Carrie, I'm going to look down at the timer. You have five minutes to tell us about the great Baron Leone. Well, I know Baron Leone. I mean, he retired, I hope I'm right, he retired long before I was started watching wrestling. Yeah, he, it's interesting, he had a couple comebacks just for fun, okay. pretty much, but it, it was kind of like we talked about Warren Bockwinkle, how he retired, but then four years later, he'd show up and do a match. And But so. he, was, he was certainly spoken about uh, in the wrestling magazines because of his his fantastic accomplishments mm -hmm. one of which being the first hundred thousand dollar house right he was he was she i i would have thought he was basically a west coast guy mm -hmm. and i think i'm not right about that he well do you know where he was born uh he shares a hometown with one of the largest drawing wrestlers in, in oh a Brutus, yeah, <laughs> same hometown as Bruno San Martino. Crazy, right. yeah. Which is which is which is absolutely wild. But yeah, so uh, Baron Leone, uh, I don't know what year it was, but he and Luthez, yeah, had this huge house. He primarily wrestled in L.A., mm -hmm. which was one of the first. Not not maybe maybe it wasn't the Dumont, but it was one of the first nationally seen mm -hmm. wrestling shows that I think also featured. That's where Gorgeous George got his prominence. Right. And interestingly enough, he one of his first big matches was against Gorgeous George before he came to L.A. He had a huge match in, in Washington, D.C. against Gorgeous George that drew a big time house. And I've got this thing in my head that somehow. Uh, not just from wrestling. He, he, the money he made from wrestling, he wound up uh, doing some very smart investments mm -hmm. and uh, was a very wealthy man, a good businessman. And I hope you could fill us yeah. on some more. This is one of the most interesting people I've researched okay. uh, by far. Um, he was a big time villain because... He came to the United States and around 34, 35, starts to wrestle. He goes by Baron Leon and he's wrestling, he's wrestling, he's wrestling. World War II breaks out. Who was in World War II? <laughs> Italy, right? Yes. So anybody from Italy was automatically a villain for the most part. Interesting. And so suddenly he catches fire because he can't be drafted into the war. So he was born. He was born in 1909. Okay. So he was, by the time he catches fire, he's already 34, 35 years old, but can't be drafted because he's not a citizen. He's too old to be drafted at that point. So he's one of these guys that picks up the opportunities because yeah, there, all the young wrestlers, a lot of young wrestlers got drafted into the war. Guys like Buddy Rogers at the time didn't get drafted, but were serving in the National Guard or serving in, in the local police state forces and things like that. Um, so, yeah, he leans into the fact that he's Italian, that he's an aristocrat and kind of fakes it until he makes it in terms of being an actual millionaire. Uh, because, like you said, first hundred thousand dollar gate, uh, big feud with Lou Plummer in D.C. Um, he is so good at being a wrestler. You know, there 
folks used to get on the on the back of the young bucks for breaking the fourth wall. There's a very famous incident with Baron Leone where he helps try to raise. Why don't you explain that to the sure breaking the fourth wall is where you acknowledge what you're doing is is a put on or an act. Um, television, that's when you look directly into the camera and speak to the viewer. Right. And wrestling, it would be sort of saying that this isn't on the up and up or maybe not. Maybe it's an exhibition, not an athletic competition. And so he's a villain. He's facing a Japanese wrestler. He gets into the ring and essentially raises $2,000 in Philadelphia in war bonds <laughs> because he says we got to support the war. <laughs> we got to support the men and women who are fighting this war in World War II, even though he was a villain for being an Italian who was pro-Italy. So anybody that says the Young Bucks or whoever killed the business <laughs> hasn't heard of Baron Leone. Um, and he, but yeah, he goes on to face Gorgeous George, big time matches in D.C., then goes to L.A., um, he's such a presence with his just tailor-made suits and things like that. Comes a huge television star, um, starts to make hundreds of thousands of dollars each year. Um, in fact, the NWA is so threatened by him that they send Luthez to wrestle the match against him because they're afraid that he's going to raise the value of the title in Los Angeles so much that that's going to be recognized more than the NWA. Okay, so L.A., was was it called WWA or not at that uh, point? Yeah, but it was a, it was a non affiliate from the National Wrestling Alliance. Right. So they send Fez to unify these regional championships solely for the purpose of scooping up this L.A. title that Baron Leone has. Which would bring the question up, would the L.A. office say, nah, we don't want to do that? Well, here's the thing. They got a number of matches out of it. They got Raka to come in, Argentina Raka. Okay. And he drew a monster house against Argentina Raka. So I can't quite tell, and somebody might be able to jump in, but it seems like it was all scratch your back, you scratch mine. We'll get the top stars to come into L.A. if you unify your belt, because they continue to be on fire through the middle of the 50s into the later part of the 50s where things started to slow down because the Dumont network gets kicked off the air, leaves the air. ABC's not on until 60, and then wrestling kind of slows down. There's oversaturation. But, yeah, major, major star. His last match is kind of sort of 55. Like I said, he comes back now and again, sometimes in Europe, sometimes in the U.S. Uh, relatively retired. He started hosting daytime TV in Los Angeles. Really? Yeah. He was, a, he was a, a talk show host on the show Love Advice L.A., so think of a nice man with an Italian accent. Um, and he did whatever he wanted. He was rich and uh, made some decent investments, became a huge philanthropist. Um, his wife within the last. Did he have a, a was it just a TV show or did, was he in a couple of spots? In movies? I think he had some bit parts in movies, okay. too. Um, but his wife, I think within the last 20 years before her passing, donated a huge sum of money to things in Burbank and Santa Barbara and foundations and funding for the arts and things like that. And so he died of a wealthy man, lived from 1909 to 1988. And uh, just one of the guys no one talks about and they should. One of the huge pioneering villains of the early television area. Well, there must be some YouTube stuff. There is. That I have to absolutely check out. Yeah, he's, he's relatively well documented for a man from that era. So that's the good news if you're looking for stuff on him. Um, the Capitol stuff's harder to find, but the L.A. stuff and the Chicago stuff, thankfully, the Chicago Film Archive, which is on YouTube. And you can still you'll find. see a close up of the card. It's just so interesting how they decided to take <laughs> this, this uh, you know, him just mulling over <laughs> right. life, right. society and well, his future. Right, because this would have been about the time he decides, you know what, I did enough. Right. I've, I've done enough. Um, and the interesting note on the back, we always talk about how these cards are from Canada. They're released primarily Toronto, Montreal, upstate New York. Um, interesting note on the back, none of that information, despite most of it having already happened, appears on the back of the card. Um, he, he was probably a big enough star to want to include him. Um, but at the same time, I don't think folks were researching very heavily. The main accomplishment and achievement it says on the back is it says a health fanatic. Baron Michelle Leone is a stickler for training and always in perfect condition. Outside the ring, he's an, a gentleman. And that's all you would know. And yet he had already drawn one of the biggest houses in, in wrestling history. 
Very interesting. <laughs> it's very cool. A beautiful ring here in this. Right. Place. <laughs> 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 so Baron Baron Michelle Leone, uh, really one of the pioneers, really one of the the, the great villains. We, and we also real quick want to thank uh, these these true historians mm -hmm. that have been uh, pitching in, ranging from uh, Les Thatcher to Mike Mooneyham. Right. Uh, Tim Hornbecker. Yeah. And I'm sure a guy like Tim Hornbecker or all the aforementioned. Yeah. And I don't want to leave anyone out. Uh, Matt Farmer and other people uh, would have a lot of information, uh, you know, on Leone. I would love Tim Hornbecker to to write a book, much like the Buddy Rogers book, which I'm about six chapters in right now. I'd love to read a book about Baron Leone. And it's a guy that doesn't get mentioned and, and should. Absolutely. You know, a-list Hall of Fame guy that gets no credit these days. So, oh, well, it's a good one. Yeah. So that's number thirty-two, Carrie. We're we're almost at the twenty-five percent mark on this set. As we trudge forward, we trudge along. I got an interesting one for you tomorrow. Okay. He headlined Madison Square Garden, but it's the Phoenix <laughs> Madison Square Garden. So oh. it's a coin flip whether or no whether or not we'll know what happens. Uh, but if you want to find out, 8 p.m. YouTube, 55and5.com. That's when we will find episode 33. So for producer AJ from Basant Creative, for Carrie Silk and Amin Rakabani, thanks so much for watching and listening 55 and 5.